How Robots Are Learning to Mimic Humans Although humanoid robots are much more proficient than they ever were, most of them still experience near-catastrophic falls. The default human response to losing their balance is a highly successful one. Use whatever happens to be nearby to prevent toppling over. While this method is instinctual for humans, it is a challenging task for robots since it requires vision, semantic understanding, motion planning, and careful force control, all of which must be carried out under strict time limitations. Researchers at INRIA in France described their early efforts to effectively teach a Talos humanoid robot to use a nearby wall as a means of preventing a fall in a study that was published earlier this year in the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers Robotics and Automation Letters. This method is challenging because a robot has a limited amount of time to comprehend that it'll fall, perceive its surroundings, devise a plan to save itself, then carry it out in time before falling. The majority of these issues are addressed by the researchers in this work, with the main caveat likely being that they presume that the location of the neighboring wall is known. However, if your robot is equipped with the appropriate sensors, you can easily solve this issue. The robot's damage reflex begins to function once it realizes that something in one of its legs has failed. With the robot's posture and the location of the wall as inputs, a neural network that was trained with 882,000 simulations has taught the robot its damage reflex maneuver. In a matter of milliseconds, the network outputs how likely a prospective wall contact will stabilize the robot. The system will function whether the actuator is locked up, moving freely but uncontrollably, or altogether absent and does not actually require any knowledge of the precise nature of the robot's circumstance. The researchers had to make adjustments to make sure that the robot stops its hand as soon as it touches the wall, whether it is in the correct spot or not, because reality rarely matches simulation, and it turns out that a damaged or unbalanced robot doesn't reliably make contact with the wall exactly where it should. The Talos humanoid robot was able to avoid falling in three of the four trials thanks to its damage reflex, demonstrating the effectiveness of this technique. The next goal is to apply this concept in the future to dynamically moving robots, which will undoubtedly be much more difficult, but will also be much more beneficial in the real world. New Neuralink PCI Device from Elon Musk Musk opened Neuralink's show and tell by pointing out that the transition from prototype to production is incredibly tough and that they've been working hard to begin human trials. In order to begin human testing, Neuralink has submitted all necessary paperwork to the FDA, according to Elon Musk, who predicted that it will take around six months for the first in one device to be implanted in a human brain. Musk emphasized that when implanting one of Neuralink's brain-computer interface devices, the company handles its test animals with the utmost care and conducts rigorous benchmark testing. Musk continued by demonstrating a Neuralink monkey that was spelling out different words with its brain waves. Two monkeys have already been successfully implanted with Neuralink's improved N1 and have used the past several versions of the brain-computer interface device for two years without experiencing any negative effects. He said that Neuralink has prioritized upgradability from the N1 brain-computer interface device to allow humans to easily enjoy new features as they become available. Elon Musk claims that Neuralink can restore vision even for a person who is born blind. Additionally, the company is confident that the Neuralink device will be able to fully restore movement and functionality to quadriplegics by repairing the communication pathways of their nerves throughout the spinal cord. A high-bandwidth generic interface to the human brain is being developed by Neuralink, which calls for security, scalability, and accessibility to multiple brain regions. The Neuralink in one brain-computer interface implant device, which is about the size of a quarter, connects to these distinct brain regions using thin threads. The N1 devices from Neuralink have 1,024 channels, each of which is used to stimulate and track brain activity. Neuralink has already begun training its monkeys how to type letters and numbers in order to do away with display keyboards and increase the anticipated word-per-minute typing pace. Due to the wireless nature of Neuralink's N1 implant, the company has upgraded the battery with a new charger that uses an aluminum battery base with a 6.78 MHz drive circuit to achieve a twofold increase in battery life over the previous charger. The new charger is also wireless, and Neuralink is already working on their next generation charger using bi directional near field communication. The research team developed a novel method that allowed them to quickly iterate different hardware approaches for the N1 implant, which has helped to dramatically accelerate the speed of their prototyping process.
As they continue to develop their R1 surgical robot, the implantation procedure will become increasingly automated, making the R1 robot and the N1 implant surgery technique more affordable in the future. The potential of Neuralink's next phase of technology is to help blind patients regain their vision. Two monkeys already had the N1 implanted into their visual cortexes for testing purposes, and the BCI devices were able to capture the receptive fields of their vision. Last but not least, Neuralink has performed tests proving how its brain-computer interface can stimulate a full range of movements in animals with severed spinal cords. Brain-machine interface lets man type over 1,000 phrases by reading his brain waves. According to U.S. researchers, a crippled man who is unable to talk or type was able to spell out more than 1,000 phrases using a neuroprosthetic device that transforms his brain waves into complete sentences. The group of UCSF researchers demonstrated last year that an implant known as a brain-computer interface could translate 50 extremely popular words when the man tried to utter them by using machine learning to decipher his brain waves. He mined the 26 letters of the phonetic alphabet, which scientists were able to decode in the latest study published in the journal Nature Communications. The data was then processed in real time by a spelling interface using language modeling to identify potential words or errors. More than 1,150 words, or almost 85% of the information in natural English sentences, were decoded by the researchers. They made the assumption that this vocabulary might be increased to include more than 9,000 words, which is roughly the number of words most people use in a year. With a 6% error rate, the BCI decoded about 29 characters each minute, which translated to about 7 words per minute. The first person to take part in the brain-computer interface restoration of the arm and voice trial is identified as Bravo 1. The patient in the study had a stroke when he was 20 and is now in his late 30s, and despite having anarthria, which is the inability to speak clearly, his cognitive function was unaffected. He typically speaks by prodding at letters on a screen with a pointer that is affixed to a baseball cap. The speech motor cortex of his brain was surgically covered with a high-density electrode by the researchers in 2019, and they have since been able to track the various electrical signals created when he attempts to utter different words or letters thanks to the BCI implant in his skull. Previously, when a participant envisioned handwriting, a brain-computer interface created at Stanford University was only able to decipher 18 words per minute. The best of both worlds is provided by using the 50 frequently used words, which the participant speaks aloud while remaining silent in a variety of contexts. The thousands of people who lose their ability to speak each year due to strokes, accidents, or disease still need to wait for the device to be confirmed by other volunteers. But this technology will certainly provide a dramatic improvement to their quality of life once it becomes widely available.